Hey all, Siksha here. Today in this lesson, we will be talking about the plant water relations. So let's start with the lesson. These are the terms we'll be coming across. First, we will talk about water potential, then solid potential, pressure potential, osmosis, plasmolysis, a terminology of some basic definitions, and then we will be talking about imbibition. So let's start with the first topic that is water potential. Now, in your thermodynamics, you must have learned that the free energy represents the potential to do work. In the same way, the free energy of water is referred to as its water potential. The water has, you know, potential energy which can be, you know, shown by its energy when it is stored in a dam. Or if this water runs downhill, its kinetic energy can also be shown. In the same way, there is also chemical potential of water that arises to the number of part particles of water molecules or the kinetic energy of molecules in the water that is known as its water potential. So, the difference that occurs between the energy of pure water and the energy of a solution in which some solutes have been added is known as the water potential of the system. So, more the number of water molecules, more the kinetic energy of the system and hence more the water potential. Now, there is a convention that the water potential of pure water is 0. So, definitely any solution will always have a water potential less than 0. Next, we will talk about solute potential. This is also somewhat similar to water potential. You might get confused. It's slight confusing, but I hope I am able to explain it. If not, you can just go through this video once again. You will understand it. The magnitude of lowering a water potential of water upon adding a solute to it is a solute potential. Now, suppose it's the water potential of a uh, water, pure water is 0. You added some solutes and the water potential decreased by 10 units. So, the solute potential of that solution is minus 10. Why minus 10? Because the value of solute potential is always negative. The water potential is also decreased by 10 units and the solute potential is minus 10. And under ideal atmospheric conditions, when the atmospheric pressure is uh, normal, at that conditions, the water potential of a solution is equal to its solute potential. And more the number of solute molecules, lower is the water potential or more negative is the water potential. More number of solutes means uh, decreasing the water potential by 10 units and decreasing the water potential by 20 units means that in 20 units, more solutes have been added compared to the 10 units of decrease in water potential. So, at atmospheric pressure, the water potential is equal to solute potential. Now, if atmospheric pressure is altered or if a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure is applied, the water potential of the system increases or the pressure provides the water molecules more kinetic energy to more uh, vibrate more vigorously and this causes a greater water potential. So, this increase in water potential due to external pressure applied is known as pressure potential. Usually, it is positive, but it can be negative at times too. Now, there is a convention of uh, depicting these uh, three terms. You can see water potential is noted as psi w, solute potential as psi s and pressure potential as psi p. This equation is very important. Psi w is equal to psi s plus psi p. When psi p is 0 or pressure potential is 0, the water potential is equal to the solute potential as you know. Next, we will talk about osmosis. Osmosis is what it is basically a sort of diffusion only, but in osmosis we specifically talk about fluid or a liquid or more specifically about water diffusion. So, this is a term that is used to refer specifically the diffusion of water across a semi permeable membrane. The difference between this osmosis and diffusion is that in osmosis there is a semi permeable membrane present. The net direction and the rate of osmosis depends upon the pressure gradient. As usual, all transport systems mostly depend on the pressure gradient. And water will move from its higher concentration to its lower concentration or from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential or from a region of higher energy to a lower energy or you can say from a region of hypotonic solution to a region of hypertonic solution. Any way you can define that, that movement across semi permeable membrane will be your osmosis. Now, to explain all these, I have given an explanatory example. You can see there are two solutions A and B. Solution A has lesser number of solute molecules compared to solution B and these two are separated by a semi permeable membrane. So, our first question is solution of which chamber has higher water potential. Now, you must remember water potential means 
more the number of water molecules or high more the hypotonic solution more is the water potential. So, our answer will be solution A has higher water potential solution of which chamber has lower solute potential. Now, this no pressure potential has been mentioned here. So, you will take ideal atmospheric conditions and at ideal atmospheric conditions water potential is equal to solute potential. So, since solution B has lower water potential compared to solution A, it also has lower solute potential or more negative solute potential compared to solution A. Now, see here the water potential has decreased by 5 or 6 units or here the water potential has decreased by more units. So, suppose we can take 15 and here 5. So, minus 15 is lesser than minus 5 you know in your integer system. So, in that way this chamber has lower solute potential than chamber A. Now, in which direction will osmosis occur? Osmosis will always occur from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential. So, uh, a direction of osmosis will be from A to B. Now, next question if one chamber has a water potential of minus 2000 kilo Pascal and another one has a water potential of minus 10,000 kilo Pascal sorry 1000 kilo Pascal which chamber will have higher water potential. Now, you know that more the negative value lesser is the water potential. So, the one the chamber with minus 1000 kilo Pascal will have more water potential than the one with the minus 2000 kilo Pascal. Next, we will talk about plasmolysis. Before that, we will see three terms that is isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic. Isotonic is when external solution has same concentration as the cytoplasm. Hypotonic is when dilute conditions are present or external solution is more diluted and hypertonic is when it is more concentrated. Now, in this hypertonic solution, the plasmolysis takes place and what is plasmolysis? The shrinkage of cell contents when placed in a hypertonic solution. What happens is that the water from inside the cell keeps on moving out of the cell and in that way the water cell loses all its fluid content and as a result of that the cell the cell membrane tears out from the cell wall along with the components and this leads to plasmolysis of the cell ultimately to the death of the cell. Now, this occurs when osmosis takes place and a cell loses its fluidity I told you water is first lost from the cytoplasm and then from the vacuole. Now, this is a picture from the NCRT. There are three conditions given. This is a plasmolysed condition placed in a hypertonic solution. This is an isotonic condition where water concentration is same on both sides. And this is a hypotonic condition where here outside uh, the cell more water is present as compared to inside the cell or the high cell solution outside is more dilute. So, water is moving inside. So, based on these we will have some terminology. What is Togger pressure? Now, you will be coming across these Togger pressure, wall pressure, osmotic pressure terms very frequently. So, you should memorize all these definitions. For 11 students, these can also be asked as your one mark questions. Togger pressure is the pressure exerted by cell contents in a fully descendant conditions on the cell wall. When completely water enters into the cell and it is in fully descendant condition, the components of the cell exert some pressure on the cell wall, which is known as Togger pressure. Now, when they exert some pressure on the cell wall, the wall again exerts pressure on the cell components back to maintain the turgidity or to maintain the shape of the cell or to keep the cell intact. That pressure which is exerted by the cell wall back on the contents is known as the wall pressure. And this fully distended condition is known as turgidity or when the cell is placed in hypertonic solution when all the solution fluid content of the cell moves out and the cell becomes of in a flex state the cell is present that condition is known as flaccidity. Endosmosis and exosmosis you can see endosmosis is the movement of water from external solution into the cell along the concentration gradient like when the cell is placed in hypotonic solution endosmosis takes place and when the cell is placed in hypertonic solution exosmosis takes place that is the movement of water from cell into the external solution along the concentration gradient. Next finally, we will talk about imbibition. Now, imbibition is a special type of diffusion or you know it is a process of absorption of water when water is absorbed by solids or colloids causing them to increase in volume and this uh, absorption is uh, usually caused by hydrophilic solid particles of a substance which do not form any solution. They are just absorbed and then increase in volume and they do not uh, convert in into solution. 
Now, the examples of inhibition are absorption of water by seeds that is how the seed coat breaks and the seed germinates and dry wood in rainy seasons you must have noticed in your doors and windows the doors and windows get swollen up and it is difficult the doors get jammed and it is difficult to open them or close them that is because the cell components the particles the wood particles they absorb the water they imbibe the water and they increase in volume. And this imbibition only helps the seedlings to break the seed coat. For imbibition there are two essential conditions, first is the water potential gradient because it is a diffusion a gradient is necessary and secondly there should be affinity between the absorbent and the liquid. I, in the beginning I told you this is the absorption of water by hydrophilic solid particles, so particles which love fluid or which love water can only imbibe the fluid into it. So, this affinity is required plus the water potential gradient is required also. So, that is all for this video, uh, in the next lessons we will be covering the further less topics of this chapter, I hope you liked it, thank you.